marketing matter. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Market Insights. I am Sarah Touchstone, Landmark Titles Social Media Marketing Strategist and Educator. And I have the pleasure of bringing you amazing webinar content just like today. We do Market Insights on the first Thursday of the month. Today happens to be the first Thursday of the month, as well as the first day of the month. So you guys are getting these numbers. Scott and I were talking about it. These numbers all hit just hours ago. So you are getting it here, hot off the press, first to find out, and then first to take this back to your clients. I am joined today with Scott Kivers. He is an armless specialist. He's been on the armless board for years he knows these numbers inside and out. I think he makes these presentations in his sleep because he literally gets up at like 3 a.m. to make these, but he understands what is going on in our market better than anybody else that I get to the privilege of talking to. So we are grateful to have him on today and help break down these numbers and what's going on. So Scott, let's take it away. Let's work, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning out there in Zoom land. Uh, some quick, fast facts we get to talking about. As of this morning, active listings in Maricopa County, Maricopa County, 14,669. Single family are north of 12,000 at 12,115. Townhomes have surged over 1,000 to 1,078. Condos at 832. Manufactured homes have gone from the 280, 320, all the way up to 406. That's a high number for manufactured homes. Closed at 5,105, one of the lower months of closed escrow. We normally see that in the month of August due to seasonality, back to school, summer vacation. But we also have the advanced pressure of uh, interest rates, all the other insights that are happening in our globe. Uh, so 5,105 sold is a lower number than normal. Our absorption rate last month was in the 33%. It's creeped down ever so slightly south of 30 to 29.46, meaning if I have 100 homes for sale in an area or a zip code, I'm selling essentially 30 a month. Absorption rate I'm selling 30 out of 300 available or 30 out of 100 available. Coming soon is at 595. That's peaked in the 800 range. That's a, a marketing component. Uh, what's involved in that? We do know that with higher interest rates and, and such that our fix and flip uh, population and workers have, have kind of pumped the brakes a little bit. It's not only down, but it's down significantly in terms of the fix and flip. Nobody wants to catch falling glass. So coming soon is, has come down mm, two to 300 doors. Interest rates right now still are on a 4.8 on the very low end and probably mid six today, uh, still working. Our average sale price through Armless is at $556,000. Those are the fast facts. If you had to jump off right now, that's a great thing to know out the door. Sarah, let's kick off and, and we're going to take a deep dive into some of these numbers. Okay, again, I just want to touch base on John Burns and big shifts ahead. The four key indicators there are economy, our government, technology, and societal shifts and the description of what's happening below each one of those. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna beat this to a, a pulp, but uh, please know at the global scale, these are the key indicators that impact our real estate market nationally and locally. And those are all peaking in terms of demand or influence. Uh, and so that's causing an impact on our real estate market locally. Sarah? We can go, there we go. So what I wanted to touch base here, ladies and gentlemen, is what mode is your buyer or seller in? Are they in growth mode where I've got a new job, I, I, I'm having twins, I need a bigger place. I'm, I'm trouble mode or decline mode, like I'm an empty nester and I need to downsize. Am I even keel? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna move until my kids are out of school or am I overconfident? And I wanna hit that one just a little bit harder. There are a series of sellers out there like, my house is worth more. My neighbor six months ago got this, I deserve the same. And they're overconfident. And that's the hardest seller to work with. Just wanna be very, very upfront with you. 
And this, these four modes describe not only their intention, but where are they at mentally and emotionally? Sarah? This is a summarizing slide from Inman that happened essentially a month ago today that agents are still the central part of all the transaction. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, in the last 12 months, real, estates have, real estate agents have been involved in 90% of all transactions, 90, nine zero. Only one year, 2017, did it go to 91. This is the second all-time highest transaction where a real estate agent is involved. We're needed. I just want to communicate that. In addition to being needed as a realtor, your affiliate partners, title, lending, home inspection, home warranty, your roofer, painter, plumber, pool guy, these people are all paramount because one of the other quotes that's coming up here, I'll touch base here in a second, our market has shifted and relationships have never been more important. There's still going to be change and that is what this particular author said, 2022 WTF. That was the title of this gentleman's topic. Sarah, here are the two, two key points I want to make that I felt summarized the Inman conference a month ago. Number one, number one, we have moved away from a speed date based marketplace where you're talking escalation clauses, multiple offers, et cetera, et cetera. How can I win this home for my client? Or how can I get the most amount of money for my seller? And we're moving into a skills-based skills -based marketplace. We got to know how to negotiate. We've got, we're going to have to do seller concessions. Uh, people are learning how to, to door knock, how to do open houses. There are people out in our industry that have never had to do that. We're moving into a skills-based marketplace. Education, coaching, mentoring has never been more important. I like this about Nick Bailey. Um, we're going to build, buy, and bundle technology. We need to move quickly with providing more tools for agents, both listing agents and selling agents, uh, buyer's agents. Uh, but we're going to do that by building it ourselves, buying it outright, or bundling it with something else. I thought that was genius. And then Ben Kenny, who's become quietly a billionaire and has a company now called Place, he said our marketplace needs more empathy. And then he just, just shy of shouting it, more empathy, more kindness. That is what our real estate industry needs. It's, it's not beating up one another, buyer agent, listing agent, uh, buyer seller. We need to mean more, more kindness moving forward. That was, that was impactful for me. Sarah, this slide still makes me chuckle because if people haven't ever had a, an environment where uh, interest rates were below anything less than four or above anything more than four or having to do open houses and things like that, there's just lack of knowledge and, and, and real world know-how. But people who've been around several years, oh, like, I, I know how to do that. And that's where we want to get to with our, our whole industry, ladies and gentlemen, is we, we need to get back to some real basic things, negotiating, needs-based, skill-based marketplace. Sarah? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, here are the numbers as of this morning. All the actives in the MLS, including White Mountains and Mexico and everything in between, are 18,636. More importantly, in Maricopa County, 14,664, up slightly, up only 400 uh, compared to what it was this time last month. But if you look from July back to June, it went up almost 3,100, 3,800. So we just had a slight uptick in the total number of single families. The townhome, condo, under contract, under contract, pay close attention, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the total UCB. Uh, I'm sorry, went down ever so slightly 2002 in July to 2186 in August, but it looks like it's troughing out there or coming soon, starting to trough out. Here's where we're going to spend just a couple more seconds. Take a look at pending in July at 4,012 versus August 4,045. That's a prediction of what's going to happen in September. Please know that as of the 1st of September, we're up over 300 more doors than we were this time last month. It's not a lot. It's simply 2%. But 
but it is it's providing what we might see as a trough. If you go then and look at total solds, our total solds were barely beat last month, but they did beat last month. Total Maricopa County beat it by just a, not quite 175 to 225. But that technically, ladies and gentlemen, is a 5% increase. Total sold the month of August was 5% higher than July. When we go to total single family sold, that's actually a 7% increase. So ladies and gentlemen, we're looking for the trough. We're looking to provide that, that lowest point for our buyer agents and our listing agents. Sarah? So let's take a look and, and see if we can figure out some of that. So this, this is just the summary as of this morning, uh, active sold and under contract. Pay quick attention to the sold or uh, list price ratio. Again, we're down below 100% across the board. The one I want you to focus on here on this particular slide is price per square foot in the last 24 months. And as a visual, the far right four uh, red bars, you can quickly see that May was the peak of our sale price per square foot, and we've quietly come down. Now, we've got numbers to back that up, but right now it's about $13 a square foot lower than it was at its peak. Ladies and gentlemen, that works out to somewhere around 5 almost 6%. Please, please know, and it, it, does it look like there's a leveling? It looks like it's not going down as fast. We'll continue now, Sarah. Okay, big graph, ladies and gentlemen. This is the absorption rate and the month of supply. So when you look at the blue line that zigzags all the way through that, that's the month of supply. And this time last month, we had a three-month inventory. This month, as of the 1st of September, it's extended, ascended to 3.3 months of supply. Now, technically, that's still a, a, a seller's market, but it's trending upward and it's looking like it's starting to plateau versus ascend as fast as it was. We're going to take our deepest dive of this whole meeting today online. Our absorption rate right now this morning is 2946 down from 33% this time last month. You're looking at the far right two bars. Um, that is looking at their absorption rate is what that indicates. Um, Sarah, so how did we get there? So we, we dipped as low as 4,000 active listings uh, essentially six months ago. There's 153 zip codes, which works out to 26 listings per zip code average across all Maricopa County. When we have this morning at 14,677 through 153 zip codes, that's 96 listings per zip code. If you'll let me just do some basic round to 100, and we have a 29, almost 30% absorption rate across Maricopa County, essentially, ladies and gentlemen, we're selling 30 homes a month per zip code. That's what it works out to, about 30 homes a month per zip code. And we have almost 100. We had 70 or just under 70 that did not sell. And I want you to hold that piece of knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, as we go to the next slide. Again, if we take 100 doors per zip code and basically put 33 in the market, 33 in no man's land, and 33 out of the market, we're only selling the 33 a month 30 or 30% that are in the market a month. We normally don't sell way overpriced homes in a marketplace. Sarah? Okay, now this is the one other piece of knowledge we need to stack into our data. Ladies and gentlemen, the month of June, we had 12,461 new listings. Now, why did we have such a surge come from February, March, April, and May as our market began to shift. Ladies and gentlemen, that we've peaked uh, almost 3,000 doors more than we did this past month. Why is that? That is institutional sellers. Like, hey, market's peaking. I'm not emotionally attached to this home. I, I own this home through a REIT or, or a power buyer or an I buyer, and I'm not emotionally attached to the home. I'm going to price that home to sell. And if I need to mark it down today and then again next week and again the next week, I'm very comfortable doing that. 
it's, it's what we're seeing as a trend, not everywhere, but as a trend, people that are emotionally attached to their home, I've lived in it or I've owned it for a number of years, I'll do a price reduction every three or four weeks and I might not go as deep. Well, we, we're not having as, num- as a great as number of new listings coming in. We've reduced that, but we're still sending 9,545 new listings for all those zip codes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's essentially 60 new homes per zip code. 9,545 is essentially 60 new homes per zip code. If we're only selling 30, those people coming into the market want a price in the market and get sold. And so the house that was in no man's land last month, and if they haven't done a price reduction, they're still in no man's land. That definitely the house that was overpriced a month ago, knowing that there's 60 more homes coming to their zip code this month, they are so far out of the market. And that is the real knowledge that's happening. The, the, the real astute buyer agent and the real astute listing agent is able to have a meaningful conversation with the seller, with the buyer to find common ground and get to a number that works. And it's not, it's not like it's 50% reduction or anything like that. We're only down about $13, $14 a square foot for homes, all of Maricopa aggregated together. We're about to go there next. Of all the things I wanted to point out to the group today was that we're selling 30% or 30 per month, but right now we added 60 more new listings per zip code for the month of August. Sarah. So here's all of Maricopa County. So go back a year. We're still up 13% compared to where a year ago. Our active listings for all of Maricopa mm-hmm. County are up 186% for the year. That's again for the year. We're going to get more granular than that in just a minute. Sarah? Okay, we're going to spend a little time on this slide here. So, so go with me to the top left active listings, 14,665. But look right below there. There's a one month, three month, six month, and year look back. The slide we just presented is a year look back. We're up 186%. We're only up 33% from where we were last month. But in the last 3%, we're up 100%. Most importantly, we're up 350% essentially from where we were six months ago. And that is the most dramatic ascend of all these numbers on this page. Our under contracts technically up 14, almost 15%. Our solds are down. Look hard, ladies and gentlemen, between sold listings in blue at 4321 and then the next line down, new listings. Our new listings are down 17%, 16.94 from where we were a month ago. Um, but they're dramatically up uh, six, from six months ago. Look at the circle graph on this just for a second. Again, everything, 87% of our homes are still normal. We're not seeing a normal number of foreclosures or or anything like that. Fix and flip for the longest time had been 20% of the national market. It had been somewhere between 10 and 14% of the Phoenix market. It's currently dipped to 8.81 and shrinking. On here, we have just a little bit of a a showing of 3.2% new home sales. Anybody that specializes in that knows that They've got some quick close homes that there's been a number of cancellations in the last 60 days for new home builders because the people went under contract, had the house built, it might be six, eight, 12 months, interest rates changed and they can no longer qualify at that, that new rate unless they come in with a lot of money and buyers are stepping away from those and now they're having what they call a quick close home and they're looking for qualified buyers to take that on. They're still getting those homes sold. Sarah? Okay, visually, I wanna share with you in the green bars, far right, where they're up over uh, 14 and and, and plus 14,000. We haven't seen this much inventory in years. In fact, it's been almost four years since we've seen this level of inventory. And that's the visual graph that, that does a great job. The average dollar per square foot and median dollar per square foot in the black and red line, we're seeing the leveling or, or the ascent. And now we're seeing a leveling essentially the last two months. 
Um, when we look at um, dollar per square foot, so go uh, to the gray in the bottom, look at average dollar per square foot, look below 90 days. At 90 days, we averaged 332. 180 days ago, we were at 340. Today, we're at 314 average for active listings in Maricopa County. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a little bit more than $13, $14. That's closer to 20. Um, median sale price, the, we peaked at 288 90 days ago. That one's a little tighter at 282. That's only down $6. Sarah? When we look at under contract, this is important. Um, under contract, 90 days, we're at 312. This currently, we're at 300. That's the $12. That's what we're under contract for. And then uh, if we look at the median price at 286 under the 90 days, and we slide over to current at 275, we're at $11 and some change. So we're starting to see, obviously, the descent that started in April and may, but we could be moving into a leveling. Also on this same graph, look hard at the green bars under contract. The lowest ranking on the, the left-hand column is 6,000. And for the month of July under contract, we barely pe peaked or pierced 6,000 doors. We're currently right at 7,000 doors under contract as of this morning. So we're already ascending back up. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. If we're seeing any kind of trough, this is gonna have influence on that. We'll know this another month from now, ladies and gentlemen. Sarah, next slide. And this of course is the solds. So for the quarter, uh, we peaked at 292, 296 year to date, and we're at 290. We're only down $6 from where we were uh, the beginning of this year, year to date. Um, you see the ascent where we peaked in April and May, and, and there's just a hint of leveling off. Sales volume in August, again, just over the, that 4,000 number, and we already know that our pendings are higher. We'll see that number start to ascend next month if we hold these contracts together. Sarah? Okay, days on market. Of course, there's been a change with interest rates, et cetera. Uh, and a reset of a skills-based market. And we're seeing days of market uh, on, on average are at 40 and the median is somewhere in the low, low to mid thirties um, days on market. Sarah, sale price. Now this graph looks pretty dramatic because uh, both the average sold and the average to uh, list were almost a mere image of one another until we hit uh, April and then May of this year. And then we separated a little bit. Uh, the average sold to original has come down and come down to, what is that, 95%? It's not a massive percent, but it has come down. And we're going to look to see if it begins to level starting in the month of October. Sarah? Okay, I, I, this is one of three graphs on a single page. I pulled it out specifically because uh, I wanted to make it as big as I could for the people online. So if you start on the left-hand side and follow the green line of active listings and you jump back to February and get to August, so that's a pretty big spread for a tight timeline, but we've climbed back to 15,000 active listings in all of Maricopa County. Ladies and gentlemen, we haven't seen this number of listings since February of 2019. This little green line is a five-year graph Please know if you go back to February of 19 and then go all the way back to February of 16, that's a normal market for us. We're, for anybody who's been in this business for 10 years, we love that. That's a great number to play in, in terms of number of homes available, being able to have some choice, being able to preview homes, et cetera. This is a much better playing field for uh, buyers and sellers, but it's new because it's new in the last year and a half, two years that we've got back to that number. We're, more recently, we've been playing sub, uh, we did go under 3,000 for a little bit, but we've been playing between three and 5,000 doors in a population that's just under 5 million. Uh, that is a lot uh, of population for the number of homes available. And thus the graph showing high inventory, uh, even though it's seasonally adjusted, it's, it's essentially 72%. We have a seasonally uh, high current supply. Sarah, one more on this I want to share. Next slide. 
So ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let's start on the far left again. Month of supply in green, this is a five-year graph. You can see essentially it was February of 2020, March of 2020, where we dipped below one month of supply. And we've been playing in that space all the way until uh, May, June. And then we just surged in the last 90, 120 days, all the way back north of a three month supply. And that's where those two numbers, the, the green line and the uh, green line of month of supply and absorption rate crossed over in the last two months. And um, absorption rate right now is uh, like we talked about 29.46. So that is a more normal place to play. Also, ladies and gentlemen, on the far right, when you look at this indicator, even though it's seasonally adjusted for months of supply, it's showing us as a buyer's market at probably 93, 94%. Sarah? Okay, important numbers here. This is the total number of, uh, of active listings. Notice that we, in June, we went to 14,153. That was a record high for almost four years. And then we went all the way up in August to 14,664. We also know that per the previous slide that were 3,000 fewer doors last month than we were the month before. So this again might be part of our trough in terms of the total number of actives may be beginning to peak. We'll watch this closely between now and October. Sarah? Then ladies and gentlemen, under contract, we bottomed out clearly in the month of August uh, or the month of July at 7514. This is under contract. And ladies and gentlemen, not all these homes closed, obviously, there, there was some fallout. But we, uh, as we go into September 1st, we're at 8,627 under contract as a beginning of September 1. Um, and we're used to playing, the August timeframe is, is lower than other months, but we're used to playing even a couple thousand more doors under contract than what we have today. This is another indicator on the potential trough that we're talking about. Sarah? Now we get to souls. This is really the bottom. So this is the month of August, 5,016, when we ran this number this morning. Um, if this starts to bend and come up again, all part of the trough of leveling. And if there is confidence that we have bottomed out, we'll see the market speed up yet again. People want to get back in the game and play. That this is the best interest rate I can use. This is the best number of homes I have to preview and choose from we will see the market get faster starting September and into October. Sarah? Okay, temporarily off market. So there's some people that, hey, I, this is just too complex, too new. You're seeing these numbers ascend from say April and then May of 2022, uh, but temporary off market 1737. Ladies and gentlemen, if this went to 3,000, 5,000 doors, we would have concern. This, for the number of homes that we have, this is within reason for sure. And the next slide, Sarah, is the number of cancellations. And notice that it's, there's a little bit of leveling. Um, I have agents in our office that, that were signing 30, 60, no more than 90 day listings, where if you go back to a traditional market, most people sign a minimum of six months and not unlikely for anything over six, 700 to sign a year listing agreement. Um, there were some shorter listing agreements because the market was just moving so fast. Why would I sign a, a six or a 12 month listing agreement when the absorption rate is 100% and homes are selling in days with multiple offers? That market has changed and thus we have an increase in canceled listings. Sarah? Okay. Expired is the same thing. Uh, slight increase from 369 to 479. Next one, please. Okay. Here we start, Sarah, with all of the cities from A to, A to T. Uh, I believe there's 18 to 21 in here. The people online and, and the people that watch this in the future can skip ahead and look at their individual cities. Um, the total appreciation in the last 12 months has been running about 13, 15% for all of Maricopa County. Um, as, you, as you go through these ladies, or Sarah, and please continue just to buzz through them. I was fortunate to, to be in the audience with Lawrence Yoon, who's the NAR economist 
uh, in, in, at a meeting that was earlier last last month. And I was able to, to get a sidebar from his 40 minute conversation. And I asked him directly about Phoenix because he just seems to know the whole nation and the, the economic indicators that are happening. And so we went deep into Metro Phoenix and he reminded me that Phoenix will be the first city in the nation to, to come out of any trough that happens, that there's just so much happening in terms of our workforce and our, our um, employment piece with, with the Air Force, with, with shipping, with warehousing, with, with the, the tech industry and the chip industry, that there are so many things happening well for Phoenix. If there is a concern, and that ha would have to be water, and again, the governor has already committed uh, over a billion dollars to help that. And then with this other, other thing that was signed in the last three weeks with the national government, I think they're, they're talking $5 billion to help best use water that comes through Arizona. And so that's going to get better and better. Sarah, thank you for, for putting us through this. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this information was helpful. We're going to watch hard for any trough that happens. When you have a chance to select a, a title company, there's none finer. Than Thank you, Scott. And just a quick reminder, I think Scott just froze. <laughs> but quick reminder, I'm glad that happened at the very end, that all the slides and all of those market infographs are available. We do make those into market snapshots as well and can brand them. So if you would like a copy of your area, reach out to your business development manager. We can get you a copy of um, the market snapshots, a copy of this presentation, a copy of this recording. Uh, we're happy to supply those. Thank you, Scott. Great information, of course, as always. And thank you, of course, to Landmark Title for allowing us to bring you these numbers every first Thursday of the month. And as Scott said, we're happy to help um, help you with all of your escrow and title needs. We have seven offices here in the Valley, as well as one up in Prescott. Y'all have an amazing September. This is going to be quite the month. Have a great day.